So here's a little thing. I'd like to just ask, if you were to draw a picture, if I asked you to draw a picture of God, how would that look? <laughs> what would it look like? If you're like most people, it might not look like much, but it might look like something like that, right? I mean, there's this guy up on the clouds with a flowing white beard, kind of old and, and relatively harmless looking, but you don't want to cross him because he might zap you with a lightning bolt. I mean, we look at a cartoon like that, and we kind of chuckle, but that's what's out there, that image. I mean, it, it, because today people get their picture of God from cartoons and the internet and social media and TV and movies and pretty much every other source except the Bible. As a result, the image of God that's out there <laughs> fails to fully and truly represent our God. So today, we're going to start a new short four-part series that's going to go against the flow of all of that called God Is. And we're going to look at what the Bible says about God. And today, as Pastor Mark mentioned, we're going to look at the fact that our God, the God that you and I worship and love, is gracious. Now, before I get going into my message, I want to just ask for a little uh, show of hands. How many of you have ever heard of the, the phrase, there's no such thing as a free lunch? How many of you have ever heard that? Oh, a number of you. Okay, so you know what that means. How about this? My mom used to tell me this all the time. God helps those who help themselves. You ever have anybody tell you that one? You just kind of like, oh, yeah. So, but, but that's out there. It's out there. And, and we're familiar with phrases like that because here in America, oh, we are experts at performance. And because we buy into the whole deal, the, the belief that you get what you pay for, it actually can block us from relating to God or getting to know God. Because in sharp contrast to our culture, which says you get what you deserve, is a God who says you don't get what you deserve. Psalm 86, you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God. Now, grace is a word you hear a lot around church. And yet, what does it mean to be gracious? Here at Royal Redeemer, there is a, a, um, a definition uh, that we use to describe God's grace. We use it a lot around here. And it's simply that grace is when God gives you what you need and not what you deserve. And I'll tell you right now, God loves, loves, loves to be gracious to you. He does. It's his deepest desire. It fills him with joy. He wants to do it. Isaiah 30 says, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. So one picture or image of God that you're not going to find in any cartoon or on the internet, but find strictly in the Bible, is that God, our God, is gracious. And what I'd like to do today is talk about God's grace and how God's grace can make a difference in your life, in different areas of your life. And while there are you know, countless blessings that can come your way because of God's grace, this morning I want to really look at three Okay? And the first blessing is that God's saving grace erases your guilt. And that is a very fundamental Christian belief. But it underscores a truth that we, we need to keep in mind. Okay? And it's this. All of us have made at least one mistake. All of us have failed at least in one area. All, nobody's perfect. So like everybody else on planet Earth, all of us have had thoughts and words and actions that were wrong or just bad. Romans 3 says it rather bluntly, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yet in light of that truth, there is this other truth that is far more wonderful, far more beautiful, far more powerful and it's this truth. In Ephesians 1, it says, In Christ Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. So yes, God is gracious toward you. And the reason why God is so lavishly gracious toward you is because of what Jesus accomplished for you on the cross. He died to earn your forgiveness. And that's, that's amazing. But what does that mean? It means, it means that even if heaven didn't exist, 
It does, okay? But even if it didn't, it'd still be worth it for you to become a Christ follower if for no other reason than to live your life with a guilt-free conscience. And I'm here to tell you that life is available for you right here, right now, because our God is gracious and he offers you a grace that can set you free from worry and condemnation and death. Ephesians 2 says, it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. So God's grace, God's gifts of grace and forgiveness are yours, not based on your performance, but based on God's promise, a promise that you apply to your life through faith. And that's pretty black and white, right? You are saved by God's grace through faith period. And yet people still mess this up. You'd be amazed. Sometimes we mess this up, right? There are people who sometimes think they need to prove that they are worthy of God's grace or that they have to somehow earn God's forgiveness. And so they come up with these other approaches and there's thousands of them, but let me share with you two very common ones. One is this approach called salvation by subtraction. And this is where people say, I need to subtract. I need to get rid of this. I need to avoid this area of my life. I need to subtract these things out of my life first. Then God will forgive me. But salvation by subtraction will never work because you'll never know if you've subtracted enough out of your life to earn God's grace. Here's another one. Salvation by comparison. This is very popular. It's like, well, of course God's gonna forgive me because I'm not as bad as that person and I'm certainly much better than that person. But that approach doesn't work either because God does not judge you, you know, based on how you stack up against other people. You know how he judges you? He judges you against his holy and perfect law. And when you are judged against absolute perfection like that, You will always fall short. Always, 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 always. Now, thankfully, the good news is that even though you and I can't save, even though we can't save ourselves, God can and God does. Remember, because Jesus died on the cross for you, God gives you what you need, not what you deserve. What you need is forgiveness of sins. What you deserve is eternity, an eternity separated from God in hell. But God doesn't give you that. All of that is God's, what we call God's saving grace. And God's saving grace erases your guilt. And that's one blessing that comes to you because our God is gracious. Here's a second blessing. God's strengthening grace reshapes your life. God's grace actually has the power, the capacity to mold and shape you into the person that I think you want to be as a Christ follower, but more importantly, that God wants you to be. Now, let me be clear. God loves you just the way you are, but he also loves you too much to leave you that way. And so God says in Jeremiah 18, like clay in the hand of a potter, so you are in my hand. God's saying, because he's a gracious God, he's going to, he's going to guide and direct and, and mold and shape your life into what he knows it can be. And here as a church, we want to encourage you in that. We want to encourage you to you know, keep that walk, that relationship with Christ as healthy and as strong as is possible. And that's why we're constantly encouraging you. Be here for worship, right? No offense to you watching online, but be here for worship. You know, be in God's word every day. Be in prayer every day. Colossians 2 says, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. Continue to walk with him. Now, obviously, you can't do that on your own. But guess what? God's strengthening grace can help you. It can help grow and develop and deepen your relationship with God. 2 Peter 3 says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you right now, the more you grow and trust and lean into God, the more his strengthening grace is going to shape you into the person he wants you to be. And that I personally believe and think, all of you here, all of you watching online, that you want to be too. And that's just another amazing blessing that comes to you because our God is gracious. Third blessing, God's sustaining grace relieves your hurts. Yeah, God's grace 
can heal you, free you from your hurts and pains. It might be an emotional hurt. It might be a relational pain. It could be anything. But God's sustaining grace can help you keep going when you are struggling and feel like giving up. And if you want an example of somebody who is in that kind of a situation, you can find somebody in the New Testament, the guy by the name of Paul. The apostle Paul talks about how he wrestled with this thorn in his flesh. He, he describes, we don't know what it was, but it was a thorn in his flesh. He, he struggled with that. In 2 Corinthians 12, he says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, when you are hurt, when you're beat up, when you're feeling down and out, when you're struggling, God wants you to know he'll be right there with you and he will give you his sustaining grace to ease the pain and to help you keep going, to help you keep going, all right? So so obviously when you are dealing with problems or struggling with difficulties, bring those to God. Let him know that you're struggling. Uh, Hebrews 14 says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive grace to help us in our time of need. When you go to the throne of grace, when you go to God in prayer and you're seeking his sustaining grace, go to him and share with him why. Now understand there are gonna be at least one of two responses that God is going to give to you to that, um, for that prayer. The first one is that God may remove the pain. And that's the answer everybody wants, right? Yes, that's exactly what we want. And when that answer comes, it's because God is gracious. But there's a second answer, and it's the one Paul received. God may leave the pain, but give you his sustaining grace to handle it. So yeah, there's that too. Sometimes God doesn't remove the hurt or the problem, but because his sustaining grace is always sufficient, because his grace is always enough, because his sustaining grace is there for you. Understand, listen to me. There is no problem, no difficulty, no weakness, no fear, no crisis, that, no nothing that will leave you completely devastated. Why? Because God's sustaining grace will be there to help you, to keep you going, to help you handle it. And, if, and in case you're wondering, how do you tap into that sustaining grace? Because that's something that all of us, I'm sure, want at times. It's pretty basic. You admit your need for it. That's it. You swallow your pride and say, God, I need your help. I cannot do this on my own. I cannot handle this problem or overcome this weakness or work through this problem on my own. I need your grace to sustain me in this struggle, whatever that struggle might be. Maybe it's a struggle that you have with a bad habit needs to be broken. If so, admit that you need God's power and, and, and help. He, he knows about it anyway, so just own up to it. Because remember, in order to tap into God's sustaining grace, you need to swallow your pride and admit that you got a problem in the first place. Or maybe your struggle is in your marriage. Maybe there are some serious problems going on in your marriage. And if that's the case, again, ask God for his help. Say, God, I need your grace in this situation. And while you're at it, let me just encourage you to seek out one of us pastors, myself, Pastor Mark, Pastor Dave. We will be more than willing to help you in whatever way we can or seek out some professional Christian counseling, but people who can guide and lead you and help you to experience God's sustaining grace in that struggle. But maybe your struggle isn't there. Maybe it's, with, uh, it's, it's a struggle that you have as a parent Oh, you have rebellious teenagers. They're always getting in trouble at school. They're always hanging around with the wrong crowd. You're always arguing and yelling at each other or fighting, whatever. Or maybe it's not that. Maybe your children are grown and they've moved away, but there's some tension for whatever reason. There's tension. There's a strain on that relationship. If that's the case, you bring that to God. You say, God, there are some changes that need to happen in my family and I need your help. I need your power. I need your grace. Whatever the struggle might be, you go to God and admit it. And then I would just really encourage you to find maybe a one or two or maybe three other trusted Christian friends, bring them into the loop. And, you know, you can ask for the advice of the pastoral staff here. You know, myself, Pastor Dave, Pastor Mark. 
I know we have a great uh, Stephen ministry uh, group. And these are people who are incredible. They will care for you and love you and pray for you and, and offer you emotional and spiritual encouragement. Uh, there is a support group that meets here every Tuesday called Life Hurts, God Heals. How cool is that, right? I mean, it's just, it, you just show up. But you know, there are all kinds of ways by which God's sustaining grace can flow into your life and bring you the healing that you want and that you need. But you got to take that first step and admit you need God's help. Because here's the thing, I, I guarantee, the more open you are, the more open you are with God about your weaknesses and, and fears and struggles, the more his grace will just flow into your life. It will. Why? Because our God is gracious. Yes, he's gracious, right? He, he erases your guilt because of his saving grace. He reshapes your life because of his strengthening grace. And he relieves you of your hearts and pains and helps you as you're struggling with his sustaining grace. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? He, he, he's a pretty wonderful God. As a result of us experiencing God's saving, strengthening, and sustaining grace, as a result of that, the Bible, said God, Bible says God is looking for you to respond in at least two ways. One is that God wants you to be gracious toward others, right? How many of you would agree with this? Graciousness is a thing that seems to be lacking in our world today. Anybody would agree with that? Yes, it is. It doesn't take you a whole lot of work to find somebody who's rude. I mean, you don't have to be on I-71 either. You know, people who aren't waving with all five fingers, that kind of people. People who are, you know, they're self-centered and they're just mean. God says, be gracious, to others, be gracious toward others because maybe they haven't experienced grace or true forgiveness themselves. Huh, I know it's hard. I know it can be hard to be gracious toward others, but here's, here's what I do. When you, here's what I like you to do. When you fully understand how much God has blessed you in this life, when you fully understand how much God loves you and, what, and how many times he's forgiven you and, and what he went through to save you, when you fully understand God's grace for you, guess what? It helps. It really does. It helps you to be gracious toward others, even complete strangers. It helps. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. Be gracious toward others. And then second, share God's grace with others. God doesn't want you to just be gracious, but he also wants you to tell people about his amazing grace in Jesus, right? This is the best news in the world. It, tell people, they don't have to walk around weighed down with guilt and regret over some bad choice that they made. They can be set free from that weight. They can enjoy a, a clean, a fresh start through faith in Jesus and his blood for them as, his, as their savior, right? That's, don't keep that a secret. That's the best news in the world. I mean, think about it. If you, think about it. If you knew the cure for cancer, would you keep that a secret? Oh, I don't think so. This is not the cure for cancer, folks. This is something better. This is the cure for sin, right? God's amazing grace available to anyone, anywhere through faith in Christ. Get the word out. And like Jesus says in Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Share the good news of God's grace with all the world. And these are your people that you see at home, but they're also your neighbors, your friends, your uh, coworkers, your classmates, your teammates, the parent that you sit next to as you watch your kid do swimming lessons or dance or gymnastics. Share it because these people need to know that God is gracious toward them too. Share it. As I wrap things up, I want you to think about what we just talked about today, right? Think about God's grace, his saving grace, his strengthening grace, his sustaining grace. Maybe you feel like you need God's saving grace, right? If you want everything that you've done wrong to be completely erased and forgiven, it's available. All you do is confess it to God and believe that God will offer you his forgiveness through what Jesus accomplished for you through his death on the cross. You can't earn it. 
You don't deserve it, but it's available to you because the God you love and worship is a gracious God. Maybe you need God's strengthening grace, right? Your life needs to be reshaped a little bit. Maybe you've gone off track spiritually. That happened with a lot of people with COVID. People have drifted. They've fallen away. They're in a spiritual ditch. You know, maybe you know this is how I'm supposed to be living my life, but you also feel it's too hard to get back to where you used to be with God. I'm here to say, it's not hard. You simply say, okay, God, here's where I'm at. I need your help. And then God's strengthening grace will be at work. It will help you change and reshape your life back to what he wants it to be. Maybe you need God's sustaining grace, though, right? Maybe you need God to relieve your hurts, your pains. Maybe you need God to help you to hang in there because you're at the end of your rope. Whatever it is, again, you just admit it. You say, God, I, I need you in this part of my world. I need you to give me the power I need to hang on, to keep going, and know that his power will flow. Why? Because our God is a gracious God, right? His sustaining grace will come. 2 Corinthians 9 says, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Whether it's to save you, strengthen you, or sustain you, our God is gracious. His grace is available whenever you need it for whatever you might be facing. So celebrate that. Because the God you love and worship is not some cute cartoon. No, he's the God of the Bible and he is gracious. So let me just challenge you this week, a couple of ways. First, let me challenge you between now and next Sunday, give God thanks for being gracious to you. Whether it's thanking him for erasing your guilt through his saving grace or reshaping your life through his strengthening grace or just helping you to hang in there with his sustaining grace, Maybe it's just right now. Maybe it's on your way home. Maybe it's sometime this week, but just pause and give God thanks and praise for his grace. He deserves that from you. Second, look for opportunities to be gracious toward others, whether it's at people at work or in your neighborhood or in your home or whatever, or even complete strangers. Be intentional about looking for opportunities, okay? Look for opportunities to extend the same love and grace that God has extended to you. Third, remember that others need God's grace too. If you know of somebody who's wrestling with guilt over some bad choice they've made, or they've gone off track spiritually, or they're struggling in some way, shape, or form, tell them what you've learned, right? Tell them about the God we love and worship. Tell them about his saving grace, his strengthening grace, and his sustaining grace. Tell them that the God we know is a God who is gracious. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray about that. Father, we know that we need you. We, we need your saving grace to remove our guilt. So Father, forgive us, not because we deserve it, but because you're a gracious God. God, we also need your strengthening grace. There are areas of our life right now that we want to change, that we need to change, where we want to be different, but we, just, we can't do it on our own. So give us your grace to reshape our lives. And then finally, Father, we also need your sustaining grace. We need your power to keep us going in the face of our struggles and, and pain. So by your grace, we ask that you would either remove that problem or give us the grace we need to handle it. Father, thank you for being a God who is gracious. We love you. We pray all this in the holy name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Royal Redeemer. We want you to be a part of our Royal Redeemer family here. May God richly bless you and guide you, and I truly look forward to seeing you soon.